Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us in listening to the national anthem. And that uh, as, as I would like to quote the national anthem, to build a country of equal rights and equal opportunity. And that is the, also the purpose of our revolution. Firstly, I would like to introduce you all to the People's Soldiers team. People's Soldiers are the, the, the office members, the officers and the servicemen who have joined the side of the people to support the revolution. Our objective is uh, of this uh, is uh, for the people to be able to uh, reintegrate back with the community. As you all know, when we talk about the, when people are often, uh, we are often set apart that the people don't know about the situation of the soldiers uh, or the, uh, the rank and file. And that also that uh, that um, that uh, other, that those who remain in that uh, military, uh, who remain in the service, may have they may not fully support SEC. They also have their own reasons for having to stay behind. Also here, I would like to also do share about the, some of these uh, issues to better to have better understanding among the people and the and the and the people as well as well as uh, to what extent that there is understanding between that the people and the soldiers who have um joined the movement uh, that um that uh, the more the divided uh, the policemen are the more divided the uh, the military uh, military uh, from the people that is also that will play uh, to the advantage of the of the SAC so it is also we are here to have a very frank and open discussion to understand better the lives of the the military of the uh, of the soldiers as well as on the police officers we have a facebook facebook page called people soldiers uh, we have on the facebook page you can also look look Look, follow us and we also have a, another page called wives of the people's soldier and then we also have that we also have the people's soldier.org is our website too so please follow us uh, on that you can uh, you can find also you can also learn about more about us and the actions that we are undertaking so we'd like to welcome you to join us and follow us Today we have invited uh, that um, that Moyenai, former uh, police major Moyenai. Good morning to you, Sia. Good morning to all of you. My name is Moyenai. I was former. I formerly served as a police major. So that uh, we'll remove the PowerPoint so that we can see you on video. So. Can you share us a little about your story? Well, to introduce myself, I came from Shribu and I was born in a busy year that worked in Shribu in, uh, in the central part of Myanmar and that I grew up in in uh, that uh, that uh, so I that you can also uh, I consider as a, like a, my hometown since ninety one to uh, that um, to ninety eight I um, I also serve as a as a as a teacher teacher for the primary school as well as I was also the director after that I became a police officer and that I serve in that I serve as well that so that um, so in that. Uh, and then uh, while I was uh, serving as a police lieutenant comma, I beg your pardon, that uh, there was also a case of the writer, photojournalist and reporter Wallow. And I, served, I was um, I was uh, called on as uh, that uh, at the, as the prosecution uh, that uh, witness I had to take the stand and I refused to I refused to uh, give the statement that I have been provided by the police and the prosecution and that I have uh, clearly stated that this was the entrapment of the police of address one of these journalists I was uh, sentenced a uh, one year of prison in by the police uh, special court and that in 2019 i was released after serving my sentence for failure to obey the direct order that uh, then i go back to Q, uh, where i where i became where uh, what one of my second other native towns so to speak and i have a small shop and at the same time i'm also teaching children in my community uh that in that term uh, in 2020, I ran in the election. I as a as an individual contestant in the election, I did win the election. That uh, because I was fighting against the NLD in my area. After 2020, then we now we are in 2021. After the coup of, of the first of February, 2021, I that um, that. Uh, 
so I met um, I met uh, some of the uh, the political uh, students students who have been active in the politics since 1988 and talk with them, discuss with them, and we need to uh, we need to resist that we need to resist the military coup and the military hunters. So we started uh, with the public strikes and demonstrations. Then I was also speaking out uh, that uh, public rallies that I was uh, doing uh, uh, talking at these rallies along with the uh, with the parliamentary elected uh, parliamentarians uh, and uh, that in our com in our constituency we were giving talks we were rallying people we were mobilizing people to uh, to to fight against and to resist the military hunter for that reason police police force uh, came to came to uh, look for me at my um, at my house no, the the fact that the police came to look for me, no, that's uh, so all the communities um, uh, they know that police are coming, police are coming, and I had to run away. You know, when the police is come, when the police is coming, you run. So that's what happened. I ran, I ran, and when the police came in, and I ran. The hero that you know, that if you run away, that that is you know that uh, well we can say that. Uh, I think that people say that, you know, even when the dogs run away, there is death, but I don't know whether there has been death or not, but I ran, I was able to run away and uh, even today I'm still on the run. That's, that's in a way, that's my story. Thank you. So you are a very well-known figure to the public. Um, Yama, you joined the Sudan movement and in our way that uh, that you did not uh, give the statement as a witness when you took the stand. You make the decision to speak the truth and you stand for the people. In a way, you're a pioneer in the CDM movement. So we respect you and your efforts and the contribution. And this this talk is also being live streamed on Facebook as well. That on the Facebook also we also welcome people to ask questions directly on your Facebook or the, or the um, live streaming uh, pages. So feel free to ask us questions. If you have any particular questions to 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 to, to, uh, to, to the police, call, Lieutenant Colonel Mo Yenai and others, feel free to, uh, if you have any questions uh, to the World Officer Monio, please write your questions or comments in the, in the comment sessions. We also intend uh, to disseminate and diffuse uh, this uh, this talk show to those who are still to our brothers in this uh, the service as well as in the in the police also we also request you to share as much as possible so you have been now part of the revolution as a citizen as a former police officer and right now how are you contributing to the resistance what are what are you working on right now to uh, to in this uh, resistance during this revolution what I have been working on is is to that uh, to support uh, one of the ministries of the NUG. I'm working in um, that in an office uh, in a unit providing uh, that uh, that providing recommendations uh, to um, as part of the um, as part of uh, the support team for the NUG ministry. And also we are we have the first ever Kareni police force. Uh, we have uh, in a Kren in Kia State. Uh, we have the in the Kareni police force. Also we are also providing uh, that uh, technical advice and that uh, to the current police force as a police uh, advisor. So that's, a, that's something I'm also working on. I also organize workshops and also provide recommendations to the first, uh, the civilian um, that um, current police, police force. In addition, since the coup, I have been also been looking at out of what the community have been facing. The people have been arrested, arrested arbitrarily. People were taken for interrogation, and then uh, the family were told to pick up the bodies or to go come to their funeral. So when these cases happen, when they the I mean, they cannot go to the police. They cannot go and complain that this is a murder case. They cannot go there. They cannot complain. There are no ways for no way for people to get uh, to get to get have access to justice and with the current happening. So on that, also, I'm also working to be able to provide uh, the, to provide the records. We will be establishing online police stations and online uh, that uh, police uh, points where people will be able to complain the injustice they suffer. And you mean, 
in the in the in the during the insuring period we are also we think it is also important that uh, NUG need to have a have a have police police to ensure the raw flow so we are also discussing with uh, some of the uh the, some of the lawyers and legal consultants and that uh, to ensure that those who are obstructing that uh, there should be a there should be a like a defense policy we are working on different policy for the NUG for those who are obstructing the activities of the activities of the NUG during the interim period so now we are in the uh the last part of the general provisions now so that laws have been had that there's a law we are now drafting then after that uh, either for the cranny police force or the other our police forces for the nug to be able to use to be able to use as uh, as well for the as the interim uh interim uh, the, the defense um, um uh, the defense security policy so that we did we do something online so that uh, that uh, the it is quite, quite difficult. We understand that, you know, drafting draft, draft the law to be able to enter during such difficult times is very difficult, but it's, a, it's an experience and that uh, the efforts we put in will bear some fruit. So that's what something, that's something we are working on. So I would also like to thank um, our friend who the legal consultants who have been supporting us that uh, since the 1st of February, that, um, that um, so that uh, these are the people that I should be thankful for, for helping us with the work that we do. I'm also that, um, that, um, so that I'm also helping the people coordinate, like people don't individual donors when we talk to me, say, I want to help support. I want to support this town or this village. Then I will make sure to able to link them with the communities in a community communities question. So that also is part of the coordination work that I do. Thank you, Sia. So that uh, these talk shows have been uh, are being followed by the people inside as well as so the outside Myanmar. So we are so there are we are also streaming live on the on the on the TV as well as on the um, this page. So I would also like to ask you if you, where you are from, where you are watching us. If you are from, if you are also Myanmar diaspora, also could you also share us where which country you are in? If you're listening from um, Myanmar, then could you also tell us where you are? Just the state or region will define. If you are the diaspora, then you can also please mention also about it. Uh, please mention where you are and joining us on today's session. And in what, what of what Sia Muyana has shared is about the about the establishment of the look of the state police force is very important because to ensure security of the people, it is important to have the police force or the Tamil to protect the people, to protect the security of the people. So the first of its kind had been established in Kreni State, where we established the Kreni police force so that uh, it is important to have such pull if we can have uh, if we can establish such police forces in every state and region then they will people will not no longer be had to be afraid of the police or the military at uh, the SEC forces so that uh, it is also important that these uh, police forces established with this, the police officer who joined the CDM we also would like to request the people to support these uh, such a such a state police forces uh, and I also like to ask you that uh, you know about the establishment of such a state and regional police, state and region police force. Uh, that uh, the role they play and that the, the duties they were carry on. How important is it to the revolution? How important is it to the to the security of the people? And what kind of duties are they now serving in this um, state police force? So the police force that I have been assisting is the Kranny Police Force, and that. Uh, the Kranny Police Force is, I would like to explain how it is established. Uh, it is established with over um, about two, about, it's about 320 uh, police officers who have joined the CDM movement. So they are all working together for that. Uh, that uh, Kranny, they have uh, they have an uh, office, they have uh, they have investigators, they have the online police, and they even have a sort force, a sort unit. So these are four units they divide in. So in the areas where they have the territorial control, they are also working to ensure that uh, that uh, they be able to take action. So they are also taking complaints and to be able to make arrests for the drug trafficking or the drug abuse as well. So they are fashioned probably there are difficulties as well because in justice is. That there is that it's all important to be able to uh, to prosecute and also to harm um, to adjudicate the cases. But right now, the judges and the prosecutors in Myanmar are very few in joining the CDM movement. 
So, so we have we're working with the civilian lawyers, advocates, or the uh, that uh, legal consultants. We are uh, we are appointing them. We are appointing them as judges, and we form a justice com justice committee to send us to according to the law that has been uh, that according to the existing laws that has been ended before the first of February. And we all can also have a local laws. We can also end a local law to do that there as well. And then uh, that idea is to be able to find a way to solution to do that. So that that is the purpose. Um, so but that is a reason that is uh, also what we are working on. So what I'm saying is that uh, in the that in the in the states and regions that uh, that uh, we have uh, in the ethnic states there are also people. We have a different uh, it, we have a differences in terms of religious faith and also culture. And it is important that local laws are and that's important. That some of the laws might be useful for uh, some of the useful in the mainland area, but that some that might not work for that. So that it is also important. Uh, to uh, the establish of the justice committee and that uh, and also uh, that um, that it is also important to ensure that as well that uh, so we are also trying to do that as much as we can as well so so that uh, so it is important that uh, the different states and regions of Myanmar will need that because Myanmar is going towards a federalism that uh, minorities the ethnic communities, the um, the faith or the their cult culture traditions and the practices and norms will need to be respected, and it is also important uh, to have uh, local laws which respect their um, the beliefs and their traditions. I think that's also part of the um ad the advice the advisory work that I have been doing. So thank you, Sia, for sharing. It is also uh, very encouraging because both uh, in terms of the both military and the police will need to be uh, to be able. To uh, to be able to change the mindset, also be able to make a lot of uh, laws adapted to the local needs. So this, I hope, will be the essence for that will come into other laws. Also, we we have been looking at the looking at the comments and the comments that there are people are watching us from Thailand, also from Singapore, as well as uh, different parts of Myanmar as well. So people are interested in following our talk show and the conversation. But there are also that we also have police officer and that uh, that uh, military they are also we know that they are watching as they are they may not be able to write comments here openly but uh, so they will be watching our talk show they'll be listening to us too that uh, so I would like to ask you your message to non-CDM police officer that um, and that there were, that those who are still under the staff under the SEC. What was your message to them? So to the police officers, brothers and brothers uh, from them who are still under the SEC, that uh, like I would like to say that it is important to join the public movement because people support for the revolution and people, the resistance against the military hunter has uh, has gained momentum and that it is going, it is, it will be escalating, it will be gaining more momentum as it goes on. It is important that all the, our brothers and our brothers in the police force, we, it is important that we stop being exploited by the military, that being that they are being the weapon and that time, um, because if you go on if you go on serving as such, then you will be facing the hatred, the disgust of the people. And that is very strong, that it is important that the police officer need to be, you need to realize what is happening. And we don't want you to continue serving them as a private army, as a private police force of the, of the city. You need to be brave to stand up for the Trump, for the people, because Police force is the security force that pro that provides service to the people, to the public. It is important to restructure. It is important to rebuild our police force. So I would like to my message to the brothers, police, the police officers, and that now commission officers uh, in the police force. We uh, it is time for us to join. It is it is time for you to join. It is time for you to support the people of Myanmar. So I would like to give a to give um, a chance to um, Captain Agent, who has joined there. He's uh, from the military. He'll also be joining us. Um, that uh, and the the CDM movement.
And then we hear, and then we can hear the baby. So that, uh, are you, did you join the CDM with your family? Yes, I came with my family and uh, have joined the public with the people as well. So I think with the family, I think it will be very difficult for you to join as well. That, uh, that, uh, and also that, how did you get to a support for, what, what, what did you get the drive, driving force to be, to join the CDM movement? Because I know it's very, very difficult to join the CDM movement with the, your children and family, you know, even before, before the before the election, you know, before the election, I was as uh, you know some of these uh, SAC uh, senior office officials have been pushing us for to vote for the USDP. That the, the, there has been a lot of uh, rallying. There has been a lot of uh, you know that uh, they are trying to rally votes for them. That uh, that uh, you know that in in doing so, they would always be disparage, making disparaging remarks about NLD and not to vote for the NLD because NLD is being the the uh, they being the being the people's party, it, but despite their despite their mobilization, they did the NLD won the election by landslide, so that they cannot take it. The NLD won the election, so that that's why they have uh, they have uh, the launch the coup d'état, the military coup d'état that time. Uh, so I was walking. I was still. I was not happy, but I was still walking. I was doing my carry out my duties. I was of so I was serving as well. I get carry out my all my duties. So uh, the all my duties responsibly. But uh, when and the, the SAC started to shoot and kill the innocent civilians who were peacefully demonstrating on the street. I can't no longer, I can't take it anymore. I don't, I don't want to walk. I don't want to serve any of them anymore. So I was uh, stressed. I was uh, the, the feeling uh, that really uh, they're psychologically very, very disturbed. And that as a Tamaro, Tamaro is to protect the people. That you cannot call yourself Tamaro, the, 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 the state forces. Because if you're shooting at the people, then you're as a terrorist organization. And there also has been talks where they are, that uh, the military has been called a terrorist military or terrorist army. I don't want to serve in a terrorist army army military anymore and that's one of the reasons why i have joined the cdm movement thank you goeja i was listening to i i thought i could hear your baby song is it a boy or a girl your 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 baby i have both a, a girl and a, a girl and a boy two babies yes i have two two children and, so how are they how are your children they are in good health thank you for asking because we there have been uh, people have been following uh, that they they're following your this they're following our live show and that uh, also that uh, so there are also I think it is also important I would like to encourage people to send uh, their good wishes or the 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 was of encouragement for for the, the, the for the children too because they must be very proud to have such parents because they may be very young to understand what their what their parents have decided to do but I think recognition and the support of the people will be very important. Important and so that it will be, it will be a great, uh, great stories for them, for the, for these ch for these children too, because you that you are, that how we just said that they are doing fine, their family is doing fine, but it is very difficult to the challenging situations that we are living through. So we like to, I would like to request um, that the people to send words of encouragement to the to to Captain Agent and their family. Please write them in the comments. Because the call will be able to read the comments later on, and that will be. Uh, very um very good encouragement for all of us so when you join the cdf movement and when you become a people soldier i'm sure as a family man you have a lot of difficulties and challenges too so what was the one now uh, that uh that uh, that in terms of uh, that uh, in terms of security or the concept, what is challenging for you to join the CDM movement? I'm sure there are also other officers and that uh, that there are the other soldiers who want to join also the CDM movement. What are their challenge? What what do you think are the challenges? And how can you also share how were you able to overcome the challenges and difficulties? That uh, there are many challenges beforehand. That I have a family, I have my children, so I have to be very concerned about also about their you know, their livelihood as well you know i was thinking a lot should i join the cdm movement or what should i not join i know it is not it is there is injustice but the way i had to i was hesitating a lot because thinking about my family as well that uh in the end i was i um 
uh, make a decision because the shield of Myanmar, they are, they are, they are making, trying to resist it. They are in a revolution. And why wouldn't I? Why do not I have the courage to do that? So in the end, I will face whatever challenge that comes and I will stand 100% uh, that uh, fully from the fully for the people. And that was pushed me to be able to make that fine, to make the, the final step. So like uh, like uh, that uh, captain agent, when you come, when you have uh, that, uh, when you come in your family, when you come with your family, there can also be difficulties uh, to have a uh, uh, shelter for your family. So our people soldier have a uh, programs to uh, building houses, we're building housing and temporary housing for the family members as well. And so that... Uh, we are still also uh, constructing some of the some of these uh, housing. We are also housing for for the eight fam for eight for the eight families can stay here. If you want to support these families that we have, uh, you can also uh, donate uh, through our People Soldiers Organization. That support we can support them as well, especially for children because children are very uh, children have a lot of difficulty because they may be that uh, they are exposed to uh, harsh weather conditions and the extreme weathers. For them to stay warm is important, especially for young children. When you have uh, young children and babies, we have a lot of them who have uh, who have uh, family members. So at least they may be able to find someone to be able to be not exposed to. They're not exposed to the, the extreme weather conditions. This is something we are working on because they join the CDM movement because they trust the people. They trust the movement. So it is also important for the people to support them uh, in, in such times of needs. So we also like to uh, encourage all the people on behalf of the people soldiers to support us in these hours of need. So to Captain Agent, uh, I would like to ask you another question uh, for you. Right now, there are other non uh, the other non CDMers um, in the army uh, in the military. You have joined the CDM movement. Now you are you not know, getting closer to the people. You'll be able to hear the public's voices, the people's support. So, what is your message to those uh, those uh, those uh, rank and file who are still under the control of the SEC? How do you want to? What do you want to advise them? The other, you know, the other, the the, the, the officers and that uh, that uh, you know, for soldiers, they were we were brothers in arms once. So, Mike, I'm very that I would like to remind them that you know that uh, every soldiers, uh, whenever we are when we have the roll up, we roll out, we will always um, as, as swear our allegiance that the four oath of allegiance. The first is that uh, we will be loyal to the state and the people. So this is something we recite every day, every morning, every meeting. So, but it is important to realize that what that are we really living up to the that the oath of allegiance that we are swearing to, we are reciting to. The terminal or the military is to serve the people. And it is said that military serves the people, the military serves the state. What is the state? The state is the people that it should maybe start this with the public as well. That if they are then in that case, that the terminal as a as a members of the terminal, should we be going against the desire of the people? Should we be going against the people? Yes, we follow orders. We follow the orders from the superior officer, but then it is also important to know what is right from wrong, because every your officers, uh, all of your officers uh, that the officers might not be there, they might be giving the right orders or they, they might be obeying the wrong orders too. You know, it is important to judge engage the orders you will be given against what the people of Myanmar. Military is the highest budget in the, the defense budget is the highest in the in the country. But what are the defense budgets? Where do they go? On? I mean like uh, it is also important this uh, we as uh, we have to be realistic. Are we doing well? Are we able to provide for our family? And think this is what is happening on the ground. You know that this the this the rice we receive as soldiers, you know, the kind of rice that I have never seen that uh, you know I have that I have tried to look at, at the mills, but the rice that we were given as well, you know, it is uh, that time, um, you know, the, the soldiers don't even get full rice. They were even given like a broken rice to, to be eaten. Like if you look at this, say there are buildings, uh, there are buildings, but, uh, you know, the housing, but the, the housing that the soldiers were provided are not in good condition. If there is an earthquake, all these houses will fail. Like sometimes the ceilings fell and the housings look good, but uh, it's not strong. It's about, it, because what they do is that the budget is, um they will, they will take about 50% of the budget to the corruption and they will not uh, provide assistance. So that, uh, that uh, it is also important uh, to do that. Uh, 
that uh, that uh, because and I tell you, our for our children as well, sometimes I uh, don't have good access to education. They don't even finish high school, so to speak. That uh, what they will do is that uh, you know they they do, that whenever uh, they go to uh, that uh, that uh, what how do they uh, how do they they get get the that you know tested or high school is because they just give their names, register themselves in the, the in the military schools, but in reality they go to other schools. You know, they're the senior officers, their children don't go to that military school because these military schools are really bad and nobody finished high school. They're our wives uh, that uh, that I would like to say that, uh, you know, the way they, uh, that uh, it is at uh, the war. There is an expression when you're married to a military officer, it's like uh, you are an extra plus to the, to the, to the, to the, to be a dual slavery because you are an extra to the slavery. And that's why they are, they are given a housing. They said they give education to our wives. What kind of education it's not a good level of education that if you're living in the housing uh, that um, that is that's well that uh, that it is uh, that important that uh, these housings are provided by the people. It's not the military. It's the it's the it comes from the public budget. It's uh, the housing we receive as part of our uh, as our uh, part of our uh, uh, being uh, being uh, being in the military. It's behind who is provided by the people. It's not the military who is providing them. It's the people. It's the public budget. It is important to have a clear understanding about that. That are they getting uh, fully what they are entitled to? I think it is also important to be aware of it that um uh, and also that uh so it is also important that uh, that uh, we need to tell that if there is if you're sick and then uh, that uh, that uh, the, uh, that is um, that is, what is happening is that they, are they even uh, can they when you even get a car or ambulance to go to the hospital that uh, you know that we had that, that that you know in the newspapers you'll see like a uh, medical uh, like uh, uh, army doctors and nurses will uh, you know will go around and provide uh, medical health care to the people that's a sh that's for sure because. In reality, when you are in the military and when you go to the military hospital, you don't. You have to buy your own medication. You have to buy medicine. You have to wait until you get treatment. That's the truth I'm speaking about. That if you don't love your officers are not loved. You're not being taken care of. Then, then how if they cannot? How can will they love the people? How can they love the state? Because you are in the army. You are serving them. You are under the service under them. Then you're not giving care for. And they said, uh, we understand that if there is a state emergency, that uh, if this happened because of the uh, you know certain second this we can say okay three years five years that's acceptable but that as military the way it has been running is for for decades it is important that we need to be critical don't take what i'm saying 100 just look at what's happening around you just look at what is happening to you and make the decision make the right call if you think that this is all they are all uh, that are uh, you know pushing you in the wrong direction then it is important to correct your path and join the people force as well that uh that is uh that is uh that thank you for also for the um that um that uh, so I uh, we have also be we are there are also to be listening that uh, there are a lot of people listening and those who are listening to this uh, from this uh, Myanmar and uh, are from foreign countries we also have uh, we also have our children we might also have next generation to think of and that's why we are that's what we are working for so that our future generation our children will be able to live independently freely in a country where there is justice and fairness so it is important that we need to continue working for the future of our next generations so that i will also be um so i'll also be uh looking at it that uh so i would also like to ask you like uh have you been following our people's uh people's soldiers talk show we also let us know where you are joining us from and also i also see questions and if you have questions so we'll also be asking that please write the questions in your chat box we'll also be asking to the our panelists as well that uh that uh, and also that uh, there are also those who have joined there that for the people soldiers how uh, we are also uh, looking to build uh, housing for the people soldiers those who have joined we are because of their funding issue some of the housing we are building has to be suspended because of the uh, lack of um, lack of funds so we also support us in there now I'd like to if Invite um, Bully um, or Warren Officer Munu. Are you ready? Um, Warren Officer Munu, you're, you seem to be uh, muted. Okay. Uh, so, Warren Officer Munu, are you, if you're ready, so I would like to. 
ask you, are you single or married? Okay, okay now I, I hope you can hear me. I would like to ask you, or an officer, are you married or single? I can hear you, but the connection seems not good. Are you with your family? No, I'm single. Thank you. So that um, you are for the you, you are the warrant officer. So it's a we could be called the other rank or the non commissioned officer. So that uh, you are the highest among the non commissioned officers in the in the military. So you don't have to do the grand work like the full soldiers. So you are the non commissioned highest non commissioned officer. I think you have uh, sort of nearly ten years in the military. So that means that you are entitled to uh, pension. You are, and there are, if you have a 10 years of service, that's a lot. That you have spent 10 years in the military, you have invested yourself and you left the military. And that takes a lot of courage that to be able to, you know, to be able to make that decision. So I would like to know what pushes you, what encourages you to make such an important decision. So we've been listening to this encouragement, also encourage other people. So did you also hear such kind of encouragement or the what's of support from the people before you joined? The CDM movement. How did they influence your decision making? So I have uh, that has uh, served for more than 10 years. On the uh, 16th of November, I joined the CDM movement. When I was in the when I was in the force, when I was in the um, army, that a lot of people, well, like uh, you know, that uh, also has this that. Uh, that uh, some of the people are uh, they don't like the 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 coup and they want to escape they want to you know quit but they have their own difficulties too for me that um, I I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm, I am like her uh, dissatisfied with the situation and I like the fact that people are being targeted that people are being killed by the military and that's why I started thinking about joining the CDM movement. Oh, you are you able to hear me? Yes, we are. So people are also there are also we have also see comments from you. It said that. Uh, so the question is that um, we we can hear you. Mm. Can you hear me, um, an officer? An officer, Monu, can you hear me? I think connection is not very good for for one officer Munio. We cannot hear him. Is he? I think it's a connection issue. Is okay. Now I'm I'm back. And now I'm back. Okay. So we have uh, one of the questions from the people to you is that uh, when you think about joining the CDM movement and there are there must also be difficulties uh, for the most difficulty to make the decision. So now that you have joined the CDM movement and how you meet with the people, so how do you feel? How do you feel? What was the response of the people for your joining the CDM movement as well as on the how do you feel when you engage with the people? So before I joined the CDM movement, I had to think a lot because I. And, you know, because to join the people, to join the people, to support the people, I think you know, it is yeah, it is my own individual decision. But you may say that in the military, that uh, because if you join the student movement, then you will be considered as a deserter. As a deserter, that means that's uh, five years of prison. So uh, that's at least that's uh, five years of prison. So that's a lot. So that uh, for us is that also that rather than you know that. Um, Though I said I don't want to, I don't want to stay inside the military. When we are, when the military instead of a state armed forces act like a terrorist organization, shooting the people, Kelly, I think it's living is shame. I don't want to continue serving and uh, such a, that are such a shameful acts. And that I want to join the people. I want to resist and join the revolution against the military. For that, I know that I will be giving up a lot, and that will be uh, that, that there will be a lot of sacrifices I have to make. 
state bed rather than the entire country. Suffering under the military regime and under military dictatorship, I think my supervisors are worth it. So for us, I think I also have got sense that I may not be able to have uh, live in a you know in a in a decent conditions and that I may not be able to have a able to be the basic needs. But when I joined in this liberate, when I arrived in the liberated areas, I received a lot of support from the people. That no problem at all. I mean, like they have been supporting us for my place to stay for the basic needs. I also like to thank every individual people um, that people who have been supporting us through this movement. Thank you. So that uh, so according uh, that he. So we also would like to talk a little about the treasury bonds, treasury bonds of the NUG and as well as about the logistics support. I think I would like to go back to Sia Muya nice. Yeah, are you here? I'm here, Sia. Okay, so my the NUG has uh, issued uh, that it uh, treasury bonds to support uh, to support the um, spring revolution. As you all know, that uh, because defense expenses are defense expenses are quite uh, quite heavy. You know when there is a war, because it's also about the it's also about the human life. So it is important to have ammunitions and weapons as well as, and we also have the local PDFs or the LPDF are also. So are getting their own, uh, their own. They are raising their own funds to uh, buy weapons and that ammunition. So that uh, the sale of bonds of the um, that NUG as well. What about the logistics? So not all of us will be bearing arms and fighting. That you can also be part of the logistic chain of the NUG. So I would like to know, or can you also share us like how important is the logistic chain for the um, revolution? So the role of the logistic logistic chain or the role of the logistics uh, uh, logistics supporters or logistic fighters are very important indeed because. NUG has now started this the the treasury has start selling treasury bonds to raise. So that if you cannot, uh, you know, if you cannot uh, buy hundred dollars, then you can uh, buy it in groups like five or ten. Because these treasury bonds will be will 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 bring you into the logistic chain. Because the government cannot pay for the government cannot pay for everything. The government to be able to uh, do that, we need budget. Government needs to have a budget. So we are selling we are selling these bonds to to borrow money from the people. And I encourage people to to borrow your money to the government. So this way you are that uh, you know that this because people play an important role because people fund the government to be able to do that. And that uh, so it is this also show your support also shows that how supported NUG government is, how supported our civilian government is, because the government is showing you because government is taking your money, the money that you borrow to be able to provide uh, services to you. And that's a request, a very humble request from the government because who, the government who is trying to build a future federal union that all of us want. To do that, the funds are needed and the funds are needed. So the government is requesting from you. So please take whatever means possible to buy these treasury bonds. If you cannot afford a single bond, but you can buy it in groups as a, as a collectively as well. That uh, now we have a lot of IDPs in Myanmar and IDPs are happening in different parts of Myanmar. We have the temporary shelters and IDP camps. You will see the families, you will see children suffering. They need care. They need uh, basic care. They need health care. They need uh, with their food and shelter. These IDPs, these newly displaced people are in a lot of need and people can support them people support them through that and we cannot be get discouraged and try to help each other with the, what we have i think it's important to continue supporting the nuj here i also would like to say that logistics support is that uh is that uh, it is uh, that all the cdm people uh the cdm uh can be like uh, who are joining the cdm movement because going to be considered as a logistic chain who has been supporting us that if you join the cdm movement that you have the cdm like uh, from the imposters like the police and that uh, soldiers we have to run away we have to run because we'll be arrested we'll be arrested as a part of the now but other people are so important other cdm are so important because CDM is the movement. CDM is the biggest hit against uh, against uh, dismantling the military uh, military regimes, so uh, the governance system, governance mechanisms. So it is important. So there are some of the CDMs who has reached out to us who say, tell us it is also important that uh, that uh, that. Uh, 
that it is also important to, you know, but through the logistic chain, it's important through the peer-to-peer -peer support that uh, it is important. Your support is greatly needed. I do understand that the situation is very difficult. It's very challenging. That not a lot of people are facing a lot of difficulties, but it is important to share what we have. It is important to support the CDMRs, not only the soldiers, not only the soldiers, police, but also the other CDM produce. I also would like to say that uh, all the other CDM civil servants also don't get discouraged. Then reach out to the CRPH, reach out to there have been people who have listed, uh, listed themselves to the CRPH. There has also been people we have lost contact with us. So please reach out to us. Please reach out to the CRPH. For example, like police CDMers, police officers uh, that uh, that the NUG also have the CDM for that. So NUG have a CDM group. So they are now working on the updating the CDM civil servants data. Also, please reach out to them too. That uh, like. I was saying before, like uh, the, you maybe you maybe have registered yourself with the CRPH. Maybe you are have to be run away for your own safety, and that uh, you might not be able. You might have lose lose contact. Then, if you have been a registered as a CDM before, just don't make just make sure that you please uh, contact us again, and also to to make sure that if you are a police of your yeah, police officers or non office non commissioned officers from the police force or the soldiers, please reach out to the CRPH to that to register yourself, even if you have pre. Yes, they register you so make sure your registration updated they have they know who they 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 have information about you because this import this is very important that uh, that it is also important to uh, to to uh, continue support us it's also important the CDMRs to remain strong and committed to the movement because it is very important Thank you. Uh, thank you, Siamui uh, So we have a lot of people watching on the TV as well as on the Facebook Live as well. We are also hearing that as well. We are also hearing also very uh, negative comments from the, those who support the SA, SAC. Some of them are fake accounts. You know, even in our talks, uh, we know that we they were people that when we go and pro, go to the profile and they are these are the these are the fake accounts established by the established by the SAC. So we people are already aware of it that uh, sometimes you say they may have a profile in the NUG but that uh, they may not be real NUG but they could be simply be uh, you know faking themselves to it as, uh, as such so I think it is also be that I know understand that people we will know uh, that who really is uh, our real account or not um, that uh, Captain Agent are you still here yes Okay, so to you, Captain Injun, uh, that you have joined the CDM movement, you are also in the revolution uh, as well. So, and that also NUG is now selling treasury bonds to support the revolutionary. And there are also local PDF also have needs that uh, CDM families also need uh, also assistance. So as a, you are a member of the CDM as well, you also have your family joining you and the CDM was with the family so that uh, that uh, do you need to support from the do you need uh, support uh, for them and what are the challenges of those who are joining in the CDM movement with the family can you also share some of the challenges these people face well that uh so the CDMRs are across Myanmar. They are in many places. All that there are many people who have joined the CDM movement in different parts of Myanmar and from many ministries as well. So NUG is also, you know, providing assistance to them. So it's quite very difficult as well. That uh, that in a way that uh, you know that uh, so that I think it is important that uh, if you are there, you need to help the CDMRs who are in your community. Yeah, I think it is important to support them. They may not be able to go to the liberated area but they need financial support they need some support as well because right now that the people's support has been very strong and people have been supporting them for consistently but it is also important that we need to continue working for to to win for us to win the revolution you know but because you know when there is a fight that the, the war means that uh, it is also fighting against a logistic because we have to be stronger we have to be strong to be able to continue pushing for it that it is important that we had we need to be physical we need to be strong we need to have the, the strong assistance and to be able to continue fighting and that with the public support we'll be able to continue the fight strongly and that's why we need people to continue supporting us so that we can continue fighting on the ground so people's support is very much needed and we understand that at the same time there are also there are a lot of economic hardships and the job scarcity so that is also making the situation very challenging as well that people also want to support us but they cannot well because they cannot afford to for 
for us, we don't even know how to find work, uh, that to be able to find work is also very challenging because of the economic crisis, recession in Myanmar, and that is a challenge we face that uh, also that uh, I think it is there also that the role of the um, that Myanmar diaspora is important because uh, that because we know that, um, you know, people outside Myanmar, the Myanmar diaspora has been assisting us a lot. Uh, we know we know that and appreciate that. But right now, the people outside uh, Myanmar diaspora has been supporting us in terms of uh, because we have a regular income to be able to, to be able to support us. But in the inside Myanmar, people want to support us a lot uh, they are also trying to support us so we there are also you know organizations like uh, click to pay and organize uh, areas uh, where you'll be able to also do provide assistance uh, to us as well so that uh, you can also contribute to the revolution and the movement so so i think you also has shared with us like uh, where you are watching from and also well so i wanted to ask you where you're watching from have you been following our talk show and also be have you been watching us uh, following our talk shows regularly, we also have every Wednesday. We also have like a the pub uh, the public talk with the um that as well. I would like to now give a chance to uh to one officer Munyu that um. So, like people have been, people of Myanmar uh, who have been supporting the revolution, who have been supporting the supporting supporting the movement as a logistic supporters, as logistics uh, part of the logistic chain. What is the message you want to give to the people? Because there are sometimes people might also have challenges and difficulties. So, how do you want to encourage people who have been supporting us? And can you also share with us why how that why public support is very important for us? You know, the revolution that we are on is not for one person or one, not one individual because we are fighting for federal democracy and that we, that is something we are all pushing for to be able to uh, to win against the military in such situation in such cases like uh, you know if you think like a family uh, if you like the example of a family then like uh, when the parents can no longer work or make uh, or have an income then it is important for the for the children to support i think it is also important for the people to support us from the whatever we can. It's also it has been really encouraging, like uh, like that Myanmar diaspora as well as some people inside uh, Myanmar who has been supporting us into the various ways to be able to uh, they're supporting us in whatever way they can. But the nature of the revolution itself is that the longer it takes, then you can be easily it can, it can be dis it can be also be uh, um, that are uh, disappointing or uh, that you might be frustrated that we are not. That, uh, but it is important also we think about that. Uh, if we cannot win the revolution, the situation will make it harder for not just not only for us but also for our family. I think it is important to real be realistic. We need to we need to hold our stronger. We need to commit ourselves. We need to adhere to the revolution because we are fighting not just for us for the future of our children, future of generation. We are rewriting history. We need your your support. We need your commitment to be able to win this. So that we can build Myanmar as a federal uni federal democracy union and to be able to stand as an independent country in the world. So we need uh, public support for you. So that uh, here as a, the, in the Zoom, there is a one question here as well. That is the, that is the, so one of the question is, uh, have your family have been threatened uh, that uh, how your families are, uh, you know, over there facing the challenges as well as uh, some of the words of encouragement for the people who has been supporting the movement. So thank you for your question. I think it's also that. Uh, I think it's also it, the kind the question comes from the the talk is also is you know that yes there has been uh that in terms of threats and that you know the intimidation I guess the family we have them we have them we face them a lot right now that uh, you know that uh, so that that like the when the family entire family you know that are their families how their families are you know over overcoming these challenges we have to find our ways to cope with threats intimidation the pressures on the family so there are also those who are supporting our families to do the cdm so i would like to thank them because it is in a way we cope differently but we their families are also then it's, it's also important to have the support as well i hope you can understand that thank you siamuene for sharing it now i would like to ask Munyu, corona officer Munyu, do you 
uh, is there any what uh, you want to share with the people about this about this woman or kind of uh, how do you want to encourage um you know encourage the people that um so I think it is is important that people continue to support. Uh, I would like to thank the people for people for supporting the movement. That uh, because when there are those who are fighting, you have the local PDFs and the the, the, the underground movements. We also need to be take care and be careful because it is important that you don't get bitten by the by the military dogs or as we call them the the SAC. It is important to be clever and it's important to you know that uh, to be able to to get the upper hand when you encounter your enemy, the SAC as well. And it's also important to be able to, to, uh, to, to continue, to continue uh, during the movement. Thank you, Warren Officer Munio, for your words. Uh, now, I would like to ask uh, Go Eja, if you, do you want to say anything to the people? You are just your message to the people. So that, uh, you know, I think what I would like to say that I would like to thank uh, all the brothers who are joining this revolution and then this movement, all the people who have been supporting us, because it is only through the strong desire, the strong will of the every individual, young or old, that we are moving on with this fight. And we, I'm sure we will win it because without public support, Malik cannot stand alone. And that's what my mess, that's a message I would like to give to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, that uh, because of the time, and it is also in a way very uh, that difficult. So we, because we are also hearing a lot of loss as well. That uh, a lot of issues. I think is psychologically. I think it's also very difficult as well. That so we are trying our best, but at the same time we are also facing also a lot of challenges at the same time. At the, that uh, we are working despite the challenges, the, despite the difficulty losses. Will be there sacrifices will be there that uh, when you are that um, when you know the value that uh, well, no there are also when you lose uh, to lose the member to lose a fighter a combatant or a civilian it hurts a lot and we have to we are saddened by that by by losing uh, that our sadness and sometimes our sadness can also be challenging for us that we don't want to yes we feel the sadness we feel sad that people have uh, we know people have given up their lives and that uh, uh, it is also that sometimes we may also feel that um, you know that uh, that uh, sometimes uh, you might that you don't you know you, don't, you, know, you might think that you are not being able to risk to, to provide uh, to uh, to assist with it and that sometimes uh, you are you might be inside the country and sometimes uh, you can also be uh, have a difficulty a difficulty to provide assistance or to provide uh, to provide donations of funds and those who are those who are in the revolution who are not able to do what uh, all that we want to and but I think it is also the same time we need to we need to be realistic and do what we can and uh, that uh, if we can now uh, if we can everyone has a role to play and maybe uh, you no know, we may not be necessarily be bearing arms I think it is important to know that we can there are we also we also have roles to play we not everybody can be fighting we cannot be go out and fight we need people to who to we need people to cook we need provide to provide assistance we need people to also to you know get water and find firewood and then uh, cook so that, that the fighters will be able continue to will be able to continue the fighting because because that needs logistic is needed eh? because we also need other forms of support so everyone has a different role to play and everyone are uh, playing an important role in this revolution so for all of us are uh, important all of us are important people important parts of it it is uh, through their mutual support and encouragement and we will continue uh, that will continue the revolution so for us to be able to continue that uh, it is important to for us to focus on what we can do the role that you can play and carry it out because you know you might not feel that uh, you might be feel, feel a bit disappointed or that you don't want to do more but you can I what can I do more you might also be asking uh, that you yourself questions about it so that uh, you know that uh, if we just say you know it's not important that we need to be uh, that uh, to be uh, that uh, to be depressed or that uh, discouraged by it because if you're psychologically impacted by the frustration by the by the depression that you might not be able to do it is important for it to be remain strong psychologically as well as physically we need to be fully church to be able to continue with the fighting so i would like to uh, as a people to uh, to to be 
to be remain fully committed and remain strong like us, like uh, so that we can fight together and we can fight together to win this revolution. And that's why I would like to end today's talk show. Thank you very much for joining us. See you next week. ยาเนี่ยเด้อลุลัดเนี่ยเมตุยโดเยโดเยเนี่ยลุขะเตยเยยาเนี่ยคุยตูนีเนี่ยวาระปูเซเนี่ยเปโดเยโดเยอีดอง